There are many things that happened in the build-up to the events of Dying Light 2, events which explain why Villador, or rather parts of the city, look the way they do. In this video we'll be exploring the tragedy that was named Black Monday, why it happened and who was responsible for it. There will be spoilers for Dying Light 2 in this video so you have been warned. Let's dive in. Firstly, it seems that there's some confusion going round about the outbreaks. When they occurred, which one had a vaccine made for it and which one contributed to the downfall of civilization. Notes and audio tapes from a GRE doctor give us a timeline and a rough idea of the events which lead up to Black Monday and how the GRE handled or mishandled it, whichever way you want to look at it. So around six years after the events in Haran shocked the entire world, according to GRE head doctor Kobayashi Katsumi, on October 20th, 2021, the virus somehow made its way to Zurich and Paris, and before they knew it, a full-blown pandemic was on the loose. All good though, as in response to this, a vaccine was created, and humanity, for now, had triumphed over the virus. Two months after Dr. Katsumi's first report, after being told to shutter their labs earlier in the year due to their involvement in the Haran virus weaponization scandal, the GRE, after secretly continuing their research on the virus, suffered a leak from their lab near Geneva, Switzerland. Over the next couple of years, things spiralled out of control, with the virus ravaging the world to the point where only one major city remained, Villador. If you want a detailed breakdown and explanation of how civilization fell to the virus, check out my video on what happened up there. Around the end of 2024 and at the start of 2025, a kind of breakthrough was made in the search for a vaccine. You see, the GRE had been working tirelessly inside the city walls and had discovered a chemical compound they named the THV GenMod. The THV GenMod was discovered to accelerate the decay of the infected's DNA and cause death in the infected. The only problem? Side effects and its dismal 83% success rate. The best way to look at the build-up to Black Monday is to look at the Banshee comic, which details the events and gives us a great view of how this all happened. One of you commented on my last video with the theory that the Banshee comic might actually not be canon. Instead, it may be a comic which was printed as a reflection of what was happening in the Dying Light universe, since you're able to pick up pages, if that makes sense. Let me know your thoughts on this below. Anyway, the comic starts off with a GRE doctor in her lab researching a cure. This unnamed doctor is in conversation with a colleague who states that they cannot administer their vaccine to people because it's only at an 83% success rate and has certain side effects. This doctor goes to see Professor Collins, the director of the GRE, and sat in his office is General Buran. It seems that Buran has lost patience and despite the pleas from the doctor to give them one more day to remove side effects, he proceeds with his plan. Buran believes in a survival of the fittest mentality and he says that everyone who is wily enough to make it to the rooftops in the city will survive. He tries to make Professor Collins the face of the THV chemical bombings as a way of making the GRE a scapegoat once again, as he knows full well what the public opinion is towards the GRE. The doctor in the comic is then effectively fired and she packs up her stuff and leaves. She hides her research in a necklace and leaves the city just as the gas is being let loose upon the city. People start to turn. There is more to this comic, but for the sake of this video, we will leave it there. It seems that the chemicals themselves were dropped in the form of capsules, or vats, I guess, which were designed to shatter or explode on impact. There was also an aerosolized version of the THV Gen Mod, which I guess is why people get a little bit confused, as they see this mist and think it can't have come from the capsules. Therefore, I believe the THV Gen Mod in form of the capsules is completely different to the aerosolized version, which was in fact the vaccine, and the chemicals were used to kill the infected. We can see various capsules and remnants of unreleased chemicals lying around the city, and of course the chilling remnants of the part of the city, which is now decimated by the THV Gen Mod chemicals. After the military drones doused pretty much half of Villador, people in the city started to change. The chemicals mixed with water and produced a gas which, when inhaled, turned people into infected. Some people turned and some people simply just got infected. The only people who were lucky enough to survive were those that were lucky and quick enough to get to a source of UV light before they turned. The chemicals got underground and killed basically every living plant on street level, which is why the streets are basically dead and the plant growth on the rooftops is thriving. 
the streets are basically the corpse of civilization. So that explains what happened and how the city came to be covered in THV chemicals. Now, in the Dr. Katsumi tapes, the military are frequently mentioned, which makes sense given how closely the GRE were working with the military, and throughout the game we discover there are four significant characters who were a part of the military. These are General Baran, who we only really see in the Banshee comic, but is mentioned at certain points in the game, Colonel Chris Williams, we'll be discussing him in a separate video, Major Jack Matt, and General Pratt. Again, we never see him in the game, but we only hear his voice. In the days and weeks before the chemical bombings occurred, there were tensions embedded within the military chain of command, but the events of the comic still don't really tell us who was responsible. It seems that General Baran was responsible by giving the initial order to carry out the chemical attacks. Six tapes by a Captain Posner give us a better idea of what on earth is going on, so let's dissect these six tapes. Tape 1, dated December 16th, 2024, sees Captain Posner taking one of his wounded men to a garrison led by Major Jack Matt. Posner was in fact working on a morale assessment, but his squad weren't aware of this. Posner reveals that General Pratt has died, but he states that it has not really had an impact on any of the men. This was due to General Pratt not really being respected by the men, as a result of his poor handling of the pandemic response and his poor leadership. Posner goes on to state that the men instead have a lot of respect for Colonel Williams. Posner also goes on to state that Jack Matt has a group of soldiers loyal to him and only him. Posner remarks that Major Matt seems to revel in his power, but not only that, he behaves as a man who only seeks more power. Tape 2, dated January 3rd, 2025, around two weeks after his last report, Posner states that after getting some of Matt's men drunk, they tell him that Major Matt has a deep-rooted hatred for Colonel Williams. This deep-rooted hatred is revealed to be based on the fact that Major Matt didn't agree with the plan to spread the THV chemicals onto the city. We hear on the tape that Jack Matt thought the bombardment itself was too risky, as they only really had one last shot at saving the city itself. Tape 3, dated January 6th, 2025, the day of the chemical bombings, states that the operation was a huge failure and Posner describes it as a tragedy. Posner also states that the chemicals seemed to kill the infected at first, but then they simply just got up as if reanimated by the chemicals. This is very likely what gave birth to special infected such as demolishers, banshees and howlers. There are more, but you get the idea. Anyway, Posner and his team went to a nearby outpost to restock their ammunition and found Major Matt's squad there, but most of them had died. Posner reveals that Matt received no orders from Williams to evacuate and I guess no heads up to inform him of the imminent bombardment. Posner asks the colonel why they were not evacuated. Tape 4, dated February 10th, 2025, Posner reveals that Jack Matt is leading a rebellion. Essentially, the army has been split down the middle, with many soldiers deserting their posts and joining Matt's rebellion, which of course would go on to become known as the Peacekeepers. The reason for the rebellion was that Matt made his people believe that Williams intentionally left Major Matt in the dark by not telling him to evacuate. However, a major bombshell, excuse the pun, lands when Posner reveals that Matt did in fact receive the order but chose to ignore it, and he's desperate to keep it a secret. Take a listen. They think that you intentionally neglected to inform Matt of the evacuation and left his squad to die. They don't know that Matt, according to my investigation, ignored the order and is responsible for the tragedy himself. And he certainly doesn't want anyone to know about it. The tape goes on to say that Matt has joined forces with Juan Reyna, who led a group called the Revolutionary Committee. A civil war broke out inside Old Villador. Posner realizes that they have to kill Major Matt as soon as possible. Tape 5, dated May 7th, 2025, states that three months later, Jack Matt's peacekeepers have set up base on an old container ship which was originally used to bring rations to the city. Posner continues with the basis that Jack Matt is a traitor for allowing his own people to die, but the fact remains that none of his peacekeepers know. Posner reveals that Matt wants the colonel dead in order to keep the truth about himself hidden. The need to silence Jack Matt becomes even more important. The final tape, tape 6, dated June 11th, 2025, shows us that Posner is gravely injured after being stabbed by Major Matt. He then dies. It could well be that Colonel Williams never got these tapes, given that we find them scattered around the city. He definitely could have used the tapes to prove he wasn't responsible for killing Jack Matt's squad. Here's what I think. 
At one point in the game, it's revealed that Jack Matt is sick. Very sick. Terminal cancer, in fact. Although we don't know the THV Genmod side effects themselves, it's certainly possible that Jack Matt inhaled some of the gas and this led to him developing cancer. He is coughing a lot, which is suggestive of lung cancer. And a side note is at the start of the game, Spike seems to be coughing too, but I don't want to read too much into that. <coughs> I think that Colonel Williams definitely carried out the bombardment, but only after the orders came from General Baran. But why on earth did Matt not pull his men out and evacuate? Did he purposely sabotage his own squad just as a way to get Colonel Williams out of the picture so he could take control of the city? Remember Posner did say that Matt was fixated on power, so it seems very plausible that this would be a way that he would try to achieve that. Those of you who were paying close attention in the game as well will know the citizens of Villador started calling Colonel Williams the Butcher after the March Massacre a year earlier, in which 64 civilian protesters, protesting against strict curfews, were gunned down by Williams men. I guess this event gave Jack Matt's allegation against Williams being responsible for the chemical bombings, killing his men, added weight given that people in the city were well aware of what Williams was capable of due to the massacre. A perfect scapegoat, if you will. However, an interesting revelation occurs in the game when Juan, if hung as a traitor by Jack Matt, accuses Matt of carrying out the bombings himself. Yes, I spoke with the colonel, but only to save the city. The person you call the butcher, he's innocent. The true butcher is right there, on this ship. What, what the hell? What is he talking about? Open your eyes! Matt is gambling with our lives as he did 11 years ago when he killed half the city. Because of his hubris, the military failed to evacuate the city. When pressed on this, Matt just replies, The condemned will say anything to save themselves. So who do you think is really responsible? Again, I'd be very keen to hear your thoughts and theories below. It's certainly very interesting hearing what the recruits have to say about the bombshell that Juan dropped upon them. If this is true, then I demand a real trial. Matt was responsible for the missile strike years ago? I, I'd heard some rumors, but... It doesn't make any sense. Matt wants to attack the dam! But that's it for this video. I said it many times, but please let me know your thoughts down below. Leave a like on the video and subscribe if you aren't already. But for now, take care and I'll see you in the next one.